you know, rethinking of the administrative staffing in particular. So um, I definitely think it would be good to wait rather, rather than try to kind of pigeonhole things right now. Um, you know, and, and, and if we did want to do something, I'd rather, quite frankly, roll it up just under the select board budget and then kind of parse it out later once we have a, a game plan in place. And that is, report is supposed to be out April 1st, mm -hmm. I believe. So. Yeah, but I think that the, in all likelihood, if he's going through that interviewing, you know, we can also prioritize <coughs> town hall um, because that's where the staffing changes mm -hmm. are most likely to take place in this budget round. So we might be able to get information that would be helpful, you know, during the month of March um, to help further this discussion rather than waiting for him to go through police and fire and, and some of the other departments that are less, well, they're, they're not affected really by this. No, nothing else with the administrator as is? Just the contract and contract. I, I shaped a little bit off of professional development okay. help balance the budget and every little piece helps. Okay. Finance committee, we have uh, gone through your budget. There's really not much on your budget. On our budget? No, we have dues and that's about it, right? Yeah. Uh, reserve fund, any thoughts on the reserve fund? No, I, I think the reserve fund is, is a good, it's, it's good to have there, and we have used it. Um, yeah, 50000 is a decent amount to keep in there. Unless unless we think there's something else coming up, but I, I think that it's been good, it's, it's worked mm -hmm. so far in the past. Do, do we know what we used that for in the past? Yeah, I mean, things example? like the planning board, I think that we used it for scanner once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, scanner. We used it for some emergency. Um, shortfall on the shortfall. audits. Yeah, yeah. yeah shortfall. Mm -hmm. yeah. A couple of public safety things, too, come to mind. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that, that popped up. I mean, the $50,000 is your cushion on a $21 million budget, so if you want to... It's get a little thin. thin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have in case we do need it through the year and we haven't seemed to need more I mean it's not like we've been running out so I th it is it, it is thin on a big budget like this but it seemed to have worked for us in the past so far okay. all right town accountant uh, that's a contracted, um, contracted. position mm -hmm. the town accountant was supported by five hours per week by the, uh, the the assistant in the uh, building department. Uh, he's indicated that that's no longer necessary, so I uh, removed those five hours and moved them over into the treasurer's office. Okay. How we lowered the other professional service was that is is that just because their fee went down? Yeah, they're just not using it. Okay. The, the history just doesn't support it. No, it went up, didn't it? By four thousand. It's a forty-seven hundred dollar increase. Forty-seven sixty-five. No, this is at the, this is at the bottom of the. Uh, Bayer is what went down. The the Bayer went down. The dues. Oh, I was looking at other professional service. Yeah. Oh, it went That's up. I'm sorry. That, Never mind. Yeah. I, I'm reading wrong. Sorry. Right. Yeah, okay. so Any questions to finance on, on this one? Uh, assessor's budget. Um, what has changed in that one? The assessors uh, made a lot of requests, which I learned wasn't able to support. So, one of the things that they've asked me is uh, if we could reconsider the salary or stipend for the assessors, and they provided a uh, market analysis on the next page. while back we had talked about taking a holistic review of all all boards not just one or the other well I mean really the reason why I think we needed it at the time being 
um, when, we took, when we took it away from all the boards and um, we needed it to budget, you know, pass the budget. But also, it, they didn't really have a good rhyme or reason to it. Like, it, it wasn't, this board meets this often, this is why we're going to do this type, and they were all over the place. <coughs> it didn't make a lot of sense. So, would it be something that down the road to look to get back? I mean, <coughs> I mean, you need volunteers, so I wouldn't be against it. I mean, and it helps get volunteers, or you know, it's a little something that, and we have the money. Yeah. You just hate to do it as a one-off. Just to do it for one, I agree. Um, I think, but I do. I think that people deserve a little bit of something. Yeah. The assessors did come to me and said that all the volunteer boards should get a stipend, so they're not just looking for mm -hmm. for themselves. Yeah. Well, maybe this is something that, now that this budget is set for right now, that we could certainly look at reinstituting it in the fall, yeah. at our fall town meeting. Yeah, and maybe, I mean... And seeing where our money is when um, the sheets come in this summer. And we could also see... You know, we could pick Don Jacob's brain too, since he's doing the compensation survey and, and he's in so many municipalities, he may have mm -hmm. some ideas about how it's done elsewhere too. Yeah, so if we have a kind of a reason for, you know, that why each, you know, what, to give what board. So it looks fair. It doesn't say, oh, well, this board gets more than that board. You know, it, it the makes school sense. committee, I, I did it for 15 years and there wasn't anything at that mm -hmm. time. Right. But then when my father in law was on the school committee, eons ago he would get fifty dollars a month mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean that was you know somehow it got dropped somewhere along the uh, road too that 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 happened so um, I'm not sure what what the rhyme or reason was for that but uh, you know, they still have a large budget to contend with and make yeah. decisions and stuff too so you know it's something that you know all the other towns are doing and so it's something definitely that we should probably look into in the fall or come this summer to do the, the fall. Yeah, across the board. Right. Yeah, not just for one department. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so particularly when you're talking about tax assessments, so that we have approved tax rates <coughs> and, and that type of thing, so that we can get our tax bills out, so that we have a budget. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, exactly. Yep. It all comes all comes under the. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected <laughs> in some some form or another. Okay, any other questions on um, the assessors? Dan, do you have, Dan, anything? Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, just <coughs> under clerical wages, we had requested Janice that position to go back up to 20, which it was. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it was reduced to 15, and then probably 14 or 15 years ago, it was reduced to a five shared position. We had requested it to go up to 20 because we were told this is the year for our budget, and that mm -hmm. If we don't ask for it this year, we can't ask for it for the next four years after this. Right. Uh, the, the way it currently is set up works for us. As long as Janice, the person in that position, is there and it doesn't change substantially, it's not going to have a huge impact on us. And, and again, I'm, I'm hopeful that the outcome study is going to be identifying you know where you know where the real you know clerical support is needed and then you know as David referred to some some higher level of support just to make sure that we're allocating the resources in town hall the best we can to support support everybody on the first and second floor and then the other change big change we have is that David supported is money for office furniture that's a one-time shot uh, Line fifty two forty four. It's under the, office. The four thousand. Yeah, and we may or may not. I don't think we're going to need that much, but we put that much in just as a rough estimate. What's it for, Dan? Uh, new desks to better fit the space now that we're half the size we were before. Right. Because right now we've got some Korean War surplus desks <laughs> and I thought other furniture. Could be World War Two. <laughs> you could have that Gary. Yeah. You have <laughs> Take them, some of them are hard to get them out of the office. DPW has got a chainsaw. We can cut a couple yeah, yeah. inches off and make sure well, you most of them are steel. Yeah. 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 So, um, is it possible that there's anything coming out of the senior center that would be smaller? We're it, it's a we're really tight fit. Mm -hmm. 
what we've got now for space. I mean, realistically, by before town meeting, we'll have a, a better grasp on what we need mm -hmm. until we see actually how the office is going to lay, lay out and how the what we have now works. Is every, everything's in that office now that you had before? Uh, for the most part? No, we got rid of a couple of desks and we lost the, the customer counter. We're using the, the <coughs> meeting table as the customer counter right now. And then we, we took a table from the hallway. It's currently my desk. There really isn't any small usable desks coming out of the senior center. Okay. They're all same, big clunky same, ones like he's same got. generation, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, we picked through uh, several years ago what was over there that was an RV plane. Mm -hmm. no, we may have to tap you mass and see what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Go shopping. Mm -hmm. Go shopping again. I go there. shopping almost every Wednesday hoping to find a desk for myself. Oh, there you go. There's okay. nothing there. Mm -hmm. I would have brought Dan one home if there you was one. You know who? Well, I have another idea, but I'll, I'll keep it to myself for right now. Sure. We'll share later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So I have a question. Would, is that something we want to keep in just the assessor's budget, or if there's not just his office that needs it, there's other offices in the town hall, like Jennifer, do we want to put it in the capital? Judgment call. Not technically. Well, I mean, I don't want to make it forced like it has to be yeah. done because this is their year to get it, and if they don't get it, they won't get it because we could still do it, I would think, in the capital. Yeah, I think Dan's got a more immediate issue, though, because this yeah, we, is... We had we okay. lost almost half our square footage right. in our office with the new okay. alignment. And our concern was if it goes in the capital budget, we might get a table or a desk and not actually what we need to... Yeah, and the capital budget right now is um, <laughs> up in five, well, one and a half million dollars worth of requests. So there's there's a lot of competition for very scarce dollars. <coughs> so if you keep it in the budget, uh, the departmental budget, you've got a better chance of it going, being approved. And anything that we don't spend, we, we don't spend. If we don't need it, we don't spend it. Mm -hmm. If you look at our budgets, we turn money back if we don't need it. Okay. Yeah. Certainly take a look at that. So big changes there. So um, Joan's position gets transferred over to the HR position and works in support of the HR director. Um, Dee Dee's um, five hours a week. Um, moves from the accountant over to the treasurer where she is an assistant treasurer. So the treasurer gets an additional five hours per week in order to perform the finance director functions that we can afford. We were talking about getting a finance director into this budget as well and the money is just not there. So the increase in hours for the treasurer's position will give, give us a little bit more time to think strategically and plan strategically for managing our long-term finances. So those are the big moving pieces for that budget. So just thinking through the logistics of um, <laughs> um, but once once the HR, you know, assuming we can make the town meeting supports the budget and we're able to hire an HR manager, it's probably going to be like an implementation plan, mm -hmm. right? So just thinking, should we? I'm worried about tying exact dollars to the treasurer and the HR because I think there's going to be like a period of time where Joan's probably yeah. still in one before she, right. if she moves to the, the other. Mm -hmm. So would we have to, like, let, let, let's say the implementation works out a little bit differently than these dollar line items, would we be better off you know, kind of putting these dollars pooled into the select board budget or something until the dust settles with? What's the timeline? Is it going to be for the next budget, July 1st? Well, that's the thing. We'd be approving this for next year, but we're kind of guessing at how, how that's all going to play out, and it may not play out that way. I'm just worried about having to go back and do line item 
transfers, transfers mm -hmm. after the fact. There is a distinction between budget line items and where they're funded out of and seating assignments. Okay, so space is going to be in a, is already at a premium in town hall since we're acting as swing space for the displaced functions and departments from the senior center. So I had not imagined that Joan would actually move her seat from where she is, but still work in support of the HR director, wherever that person is. And we're looking at a couple of options within this building. Tim, you and I should talk. So I'm, I'm still going to basically be doing the same functions yeah. I'm doing now, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the benefits, the payroll, mm -hmm. insurance, yada, yada, <laughs> yes. and doing that. And for the time being, you know, Honestly, I can say more of it is HR than uh, assistant, Treasurer. Yeah. assistant Linda. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm still there to do that in the event that she's out. I'm here to do so it. On the treasurer side. As we need to transfer, we just transfer. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to get ourselves tied up in a pretzel knot if we do something different. Right. That's all. Because what we we're missing. Um, we're missing the role now of the HR director or manager. Mm -hmm who may also have some ideas of how, what uh, what is better in that department or better in the treasurer's department. Joan may continue to doing the same things and the HR person may decide payroll does belong in treasurer. And then then we've got Joan over a, you know, a part of each or we're training someone else. So I, I don't know how much room we want to leave for a, a new person also to help develop that or whether or whether this new person will be as flexible as we are, David, and just say, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pay it out of this, but we'll, we'll make it work until we can fix it up for the following year. Um, and, and does it really, is there a problem with whether I'm being paid from one line or the other? I, I don't think so. No, it's from, just I mean, not, would be the issue. not from us. Yeah. It's yeah. one pot. Yeah. And I don't see that as an issue with the auditors some, or the state either. Some of this is tied into this whole conversation about the support staff oh, okay. because, right. like, you know, Linda originally had put in mm -hmm. clerical support, knowing that there's certain functions that happen in your department that would lend themselves to to that grade level right. position, mm -hmm. right. and that's taken out. But that's that's why I kind of want to put a hold on anything associated with the people until we mm -hmm. have a better sense coming out of that study, staffing study, right. So I have a question when it comes then on top of that. So um, so for the treasurer, you're going to be doing two jobs, right? Because you're going to take on temporary the finance person's job. Or is that not temporary? Right, that not, that the certain functions of it. Not, not the, um, and when you have a finance director, they're really running in all of the financial departments. Right. And it's not going to be like that. I mean, it, eventually if you have someone like that, they'll have treasurer, collector, assessor, of the various, they'll be reporting, an accountant reporting to a finance director. It's not going to be like that, but there are elements of the position. Sure. The planning, capital yeah. planning, uh, <coughs> more things that uh, both David and I would like to see done. So we still we to want do. to have someone else. I mean, we want to hire someone in addition. This is just a temporary thing that you're going to pick up this extra stuff. Kind of. I mean, I'm just wondering, is it going to be, are we doing, is this going to increase a, a level? Are we doing an, a, a level increase or um, is this going to, are we, because the reason for the increase is because the extra duties, right? The, job it, the duties. increase is for the extra hours to do the duties. I am actually at this point really not, not looking to be paid as a finance um, director level. It's because of the hours and, and the hours, um, it has been, I've been putting in probably about an extra 10 hours a week for the last couple of years and doing some of these extra things, which, sure. you know, which, which I want to, and oh, I like sure. to do, um, and trying to develop this and trying to see where we, where we want to go and, it, and if what's being done is of value to the town, is it something sure. they want to continue with. So I, I kind of feel like I'm a, maybe a placeholder, I guess, until yeah. we can get to that next level, see, see, what, see what works for us. Um, and I, I do think that probably whatever we're doing with that position now, um, when you uh, you say temporary, I don't know whether you're. Oh, I, it's, it's while I'm here. Sure. Well, what I was I'm, thinking I'm was, if, if we I'm hire here. someone for a, a job, are we going to then take away the out extra duties that you're doing and then take that money and move it to another person? I don't know. 
Oh, okay. So I mean, I'm just thinking yeah. about there. Um, there is such a thing as a finance director slash treasurer, and the other towns um, that have that. Sometimes it's an accountant, finance director. So I, I don't, I don't know how we want to go with that, and I don't sure. know how soon we want to decide or whether that's something we just want to put on and evaluate every six months and see how it's going. I think that at such time that I leave, I don't think that uh, you know you may go back to having treasurer. I, I, I don't know. Oh. Treasurer, and then maybe position that's underneath the sure. a town administrator. Could even become a combined treasurer collector at that point. And there are a lot there's of, a, a lot number of, of different ways have. that we they could be configured at that point, depending on who you've got to work with and what their particular skills are. As okay. we, we've Dave and I have had the discussion too that um, you know when we look at see what happens with town administrators from town to town and, and what kind of support staff they have or what kind of support they might have and whether they have a finance director, whether they have an HR director, whether who they have underneath them, kind of depends on the on the talents, interests, skills of the town administrator because everyone has a, something that they're good at and they'll focus on and then they need supplementing in another area. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we have to. Let play this in. out a while longer. Sure, I guess. And then meanwhile, we look for that that person. That makes sense. Now, is that going to well? Then, since we're doing that, I mean, maybe it, will that affect the level that you're at? Maybe I mean, when we're doing this study, will it make that oh, level? Yeah, yeah. Again, I think yeah. that that study needs to stand on its own and, right. and look at all positions, not yeah. singling anybody out. That's the, yeah, the whole thing we're trying to get away from is one-offs. Right, so, right, right, right. So that's why I was asking, just because we're increasing. I see. Typically, Amy, I think that the HR and the finance director are above um, a treasurer and below an administrator. They are at another level. Okay. So, is that? I don't know the level. Usual. Yeah. And it depends on a town. Exactly. And it, it because it's it's typically the town or the city that develops what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some towns that have. A town administrator and a finance director who solely takes care of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, you know, right. so yeah. it's right. it depends on the town. It has to be how we want to develop the position. Mm -hmm. and, and she, uh, Linda, explained it perfectly. It's the skill set of the person. Also. Exactly. You sure. know, if if they're specialized in one thing and one thing only, then that's where we need to get into another person. You know, it's it's just that that simple, really. Depends who you hire. Yeah. yeah. I just have a question on the assistant treasurer position. So if mm -hmm. Joan's going to HR, you're doing a lot of HR roles now. We have that person, you know, part-time person. It looks like doing the assistant treasurer role is that kind of a split position? Uh, uh, that will that be? That the would be shared with Tim's office. Okay. <coughs> Right, whether whether that's enough or not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah, it just seems like that's a, a little bit of extra help on the second floor here. If, hopefully. Yes, yeah. yes, and I think again, that's not going to be a new seat or a new desk. It's going to be where we're working. Yeah. Um, so whether it's between Joan and Dee Dee, um, others, I, yeah, we'll have to see how that works because we don't really have an ability to put in another. Position, but the, as as we talked about early in the budget process, the more hours we're able to put in support, mm -hmm. the more the financial planning end of it I could do within the hours that I have. Okay. So, you know, we'll just um, depending on what's funded and, and who we're able to find, that will define pretty much what I what I'm able to do. And with these hours, is that does that mean, I don't know, is Dee Dee right now part-time and will be going yeah, to full-time? It doesn't no, exactly full -time. add up quite She's full-time now? Yeah. Okay. She looks out of the town. Collector's office. Okay. No. 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 She, was she was 10 account. hours for the account. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So and it's that's, just a shift where away. those 10 hours okay, are yeah. going. Mm -hmm. She's also working for the planning boards. <laughs> right. There we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> she said she'll work all the hours. Okay. There we go. Um, right, and it's not always that many hours uh, every single every week. week. 
Absolutely. especially when someone's sitting in another office. There may be a week. I think I've already we've we've actually already started to try and implement that because the she's not been doing very much for the accountant, and you haven't had very much from the planning board going to her. So she's already learning. Uh, this week she did several hours of data entry, and uh, it's it's, huge. it's wonderful. <laughs> it is huge. Uh, um, now that it's implemented, that's what, like I said, I, I would like to see it stay and then we can just adjust as needed. And then for fall, even if we're, you're going to have another few months to take a look at it and see if, if you're going to work, if it's working correctly. Not in next annual meeting, we can adjust it. Yeah, we well, we talk a lot about the different options and how it would work out. So we're all, we're very willing to keep. Visiting it. The tax foreclosure? Why don't you need the um, tax foreclosure dollars uh, anymore? Because we have the um, revolving account now. And oh, right, right, right. it is, we, we funded the revolving yeah. account. Also, at the beginning of this fiscal year, we happened to have taken in two very large tax titles who had with, with a lot of back expenses, which has set us up for a while. So, yeah. so that's been able to go down to zero. Everybody pays. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> So the next one, any other questions for treasurer? Okay. Uh, tax collector? Um, so, so I propose moving uh, Janice and Sowers from the select board to be fund 10 hours of her time out of the select board budget. And I propose five hours to go to the tax collector, but the tax collector has had a conversation that you probably don't have a use for that position. So now we, had, we have a flow person. So we had talked about uh, perhaps redeploying that person to the town clerk. Mm -hmm. but again, this goes to the this goes back to the, the conversation about figuring out where we can yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't have clerical services uh, that amount to five hours a week mm -hmm. in my office. Mm -hmm. Do I need people to stuff bills when we're stuffing bills? You bet. You sure do. Yeah. Um, but it, it it doesn't make sense to do that. The reason that I had increased my hours to 37 and a half is because right now I'm working between 38 and 42 hours a week doing things that that I need to do not you know not having to no clerical level type things involved right. so So the tech support dropped. It looked like it was. Oh, okay. Is that the actual? Yeah. So the actual was 800. Mm -hmm. So that's you. You don't anticipate anything. You have the different software now, right? Uh, not yet. We're <laughs> working out of both systems right now. Everybody should have gotten their excise bills in the mail. Today. We did. Oh, yeah. Got lots they look of them. Very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that that's the. The first phase is the excise, and then everything else moves July 1. So okay. in that time, we have entry into both systems and are trying to convert everything over. And it's, um, It'll get there. I know it will. I don't have faith. It'll get there. Anything but. else with a tax collector? Can I just ask a dumb, so, so that process that you're going through right now, obviously that's a that's a one time, right? Is any I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> every yeah. two years let's do this. No. <laughs> Is there I mean, because you're having to do double entry and is does that lend itself to any sort of temporary help from the outside where somebody or do do they have to really know That's that's the problem, to teach them the point system and and Vader at the same time is, yeah. Um, and I mean, Kim and I will, going forward, always enter into Vader. Where it helps is in the accountant's office and Linda's office because that will all bleed into the general. Oh yeah, stuff. no, it's just, she's so I before we're going. But it still has to, still has to be entered on our end. So yes. Yeah. 
I didn't know if maybe we could, you know, yeah. tap the finance committee, but that reserve fund, if you wonder where the 50000 goes, let's <laughs> see if we could get temporary help in so that you didn't have to. I mean, I, I don't think it makes <coughs> a whole lot of sense That's when you're up. Yeah. To, to do that, because by the time you train somebody, mm -hmm. particularly on the old system, yes. um, it's done. That conversion that we're talking about is funded uh, mostly through a grant from the IT folks at uh, mm -hmm. the Commonwealth Compact. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just thinking it's the opportunity cost of what Sue and Kim aren't doing mm -hmm. because they're doing that. Yep. You know, we're running parallel systems. I mean, I've done it many times, and it's it's, it's not fun, fun and it's <laughs> and it feels wasteful because you're that's all you're doing. Yeah, and, so. and balancing both systems and, and yeah. You know, and uh, how much more time do you figure before it's all? Uh, well, she said July one. They July have one. Sure. We will. Uh, yeah, July one or uh, yeah, July one. We will issue all new bills, mm -hmm. and they don't look the same. And I hope to um, put a packet together to at least uh, have Suzanne at the senior center and Drew put on TV five so that. It's kind of like, this is what it looked away. like before, this is what it looks like now. <laughs> because, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of color on our bills. They're, and you see it in other towns, Amherst and it, it, pretty much anywhere else. Um, they don't use the, the special color. So our demands that will go out um, have no red on them as mm -hmm. ours always did, and um, so. I had no idea that that was in so. I know you didn't. So <laughs> I, I know. But I've been trying to educate our folks who come in, particularly our elderly folks, and go, okay, so this is what it's gonna look like now, so don't throw it away. You know, it's not a, just a, you know. Scrap paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kept accusing my husband that he had my excise tax somewhere. No. <laughs> no, and I He said, there our, it is on the table today. And I leave our date static mm -hmm. so that there is no confusion. Right. Um, and it seems to work well for us. Uh, so. Okay. Town Council budget. I love a funded it. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that would be good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Find our P's and Q's and we shall be fine. Yeah, I just pass that word around. <laughs> That's all I could say. Uh, any question on that budget or not? No? Right. Human resource budget, which is... Uh, so this is new and different. Mm -hmm. All right, so it consists of a uh, salaried human resources director. Can I, uh, <clears throat> I believe we, we discussed a range. Yeah. <laughs> this appears to be at the high end of the range, and are we setting expectations if we go out to? You may reduce that budget if you wish. Well, or just not have it quite so emblazoned in the um, rip and read budget in the public arena. You know what I mean? No. Could, you <laughs> that? What you, Could we? Are you talking about hiding that number? I'm, I'm talking about perhaps putting it in the select board budget. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, again, just somewhere where if we're negotiating with. Or what about reserve? Or the reserve fund? Yeah, actually, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, just, you know. You want to throw saying? it in the next line down, girl. Yeah. Okay. You could. <laughs> 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 we could, couldn't we just have human resource salaries or something like that? I mean, that would even what's, be helpful. What's voted is like that, but yeah. yeah. You know, put it as one line in the vote. You mean just mm -hmm. salary line? Right. Yeah. Well, wasn't it your policy? <laughs> yeah, but not, not when we're at the point of going out to hire. <laughs> <we're starting laughs> <off. laughs> That's it's after everybody's in, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, the, it won't show up on Tommy and vote uh, for like that. But yeah, I mean, I'm, whatever whatever you need to do, I just <laughs> okay. hate to so I, make that the... Joan's position is point. being funded out of there in the second line, and then the, this is a position that we need to invest in the professional development. So I created a, 
uh, professional development budget that should be adequate for a startup human resources director. They should be attending the MMPA meetings all the time. That's under the tuition well, meetings line? Yeah. Or the dues line? Yep. Both? Both. Yeah, so MMPA is 200 bucks a year, and then they have like five or six meetings throughout the Commonwealth. Town clerk registers budget. Is there anything? No. Okay, the only thing that I know David took out was the voting booths. Uh, Seven thousand, I believe, he said for the capital. Yep, it's an article so ten of the board. Um, the only thing I want to again emphasize is the registrar's budget kind of ebbs and flows based on the election cycle. Mm -hmm. So the numbers you see right here, we are on a non-election year. Those are going to change dramatically and quite a huge. So I just want to <clears throat> make you folks aware because I know we're kind of planning long term, but you get a picture of this year. It's not going to be the same. Uh, obviously, more elections is more expenses and wages, printing, etc. We're also, um, once the senior center is complete, we're going to be moving our polling location to the senior center so we don't have to use the high schools. So, um, Unfortunately, we haven't been able to work our schedules out where school's not in session <coughs> during some days, so I think that's a kind of a win-win. The only thing is that there are mandatory requirements for changing point locations, you know, simple things like mailing to every single household. So those are little, little hiccups that are going to affect the budget as well that I just want to kind of throw out there for you folks. Uh, the only good news is um, I was talking to the Census Division and um, Calvin's office today, and we will not need to re precinct um, for another 10 years because we're not going to hit the number by the 2020 census, and it's done in 10 year increments. So even if we go over the number after 2020, we're locked into that 10 years. So, and after that, it's a whole other ball game, but we'll deal with that when it comes for that. Otherwise, everything is pretty much every other year steady. Question real quick mm -hmm. voting booth you want or voting machine? Is it going to have frank choice voting capability? Just because I know that's a thing and I just ask now. It will not. It won't, okay. <laughs> but the machine's coming this year, so voting booths are, would be for next fiscal year. The one you're looking at purchasing will? The one I'm purchasing was in my budget now. Yeah. The voting booths are for next year. Oh, those are voting. Oops, oh, not, not the right. machine. No, we don't have it yet. It will be done before the end of the fiscal yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the lifespan of our boost now did not last as long as mm -hmm. expected, and we are required to have a certain number of voting booths available based on our registered voters. Mm -hmm. So we are de desperately need new ones. So what, like, how does a voting booth become different? Uh, if they it's break. not handled properly, if they're stored incorrectly, if people, we, I don't know if you guys notice where you vote, they kind of all shrink down and fold up. If they are damaged or bent, they won't be open. Oh, okay. um, things like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to think of other things as well to kind of keep the cost down there by having some kind of table ones where people can actually sit. But I know the majority of people like to stand. So, But again, after that's purchased, that would be a decrease as well for any further fiscal years. Okay. okay. Thank you. Conservation Commission? Did you want to cover my office as well? Oh, sure. Yeah. Would you like to do that? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we just went right along, though. <laughs> um, you guys also basically addressed some of the issues I was going to bring up. Um, right now, kind of Dan and I have the best of both worlds with the person we have in our position, which is being Janice. I just want to clarify that although 10 of her hours are being paid by the select board, her hours are basically divided between me and Dan. So it's kind of been a win-win for us where you guys kind of pay for half the salary, but we're using her hours. Mm -hmm. So by David saying, I'm going to give Sue five of her paid hours, she's already occupied in those 20 hours. So I was a little confused how that could be split up. And again, I know we're kind of focusing right now on this year, but we're also trying to do a five-year plan. Both Janice and Pat in the next few years are going to be retiring. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate, I can't wait for this classification. And I understand a lot's going to um, 
be determined by that. But right now I pay five hours to Janice and she's also my town clerk assistant. Mm -hmm. There's, you don't need a classification guy to tell us that's not gonna work. Yeah. So again, I just wanted to throw this out in the radar that in the next four years that is gonna change. And when that time comes, I hope everyone's open to potential increases that might happen. Okay. You know, if we're having so much trouble with the voting rules, why would we not want to maybe keep that $7,000 in there as a buffer? So if you do need them at any point in time to, to be replaced? Well, I thought you just moved it to the capital. capital. Yeah, I, I know, okay. I know, but I'm talking about leaving that in the budget. If, if they don't last as long as they, the older ones did. The older ones were made out of wood and they were about 100 but years they old. Were so. They did their job. <laughs> um, maybe we could do something similar to like on a lower scale, like the police or DPW does with their vehicles. Just yeah. kind of do every couple of years, if you see a couple going out, do a couple in. That way you wouldn't mm -hmm. have to keep the entire 7,000 in there, but there'd be a buffer if it was needed. And I hate to use that term buffer because I know how tight things are. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I would appreciate that. So we are right now for 2020. Uh, no, David no. took it out. Yeah, we took it out. Oh, so it would have to go okay. through the capital planning process and be, you know, prioritized for the fall. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be a problem. Yeah, right now I have it on the spring. So we get capital item in the spring. Oh, for this town meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we kind of really don't have a choice. We kind of need that. Yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, they're one's broken now that she has to replace so, you know if, if it's in the budget if it's not in the budget goes back anyway so well again if it's an emergency we can always <coughs> do sure. the finance for the <laughs> reserve fund to uh, i guess i am with john i don't want to understand so when we talked about when i mentioned moving the furniture from the budget to the capital we're like no maybe it's better here because we need it right now. Well, if we need it right now, the voting booths, and it's not something we can push up, why do we not the furniture? The furniture is not mandated. The voting booths are. Right, so but either way, we need both of them, right? But right do we now. need the voting booths for this April? Or? Yeah, we need, well, we, we need Dan's desk like as soon as possible, so like the voting booths, we're not gonna need The voting booths will be for this April. Yeah, before. We, okay. won't, we won't need right. them until next so April. So you got a few more months, I got you. Theoretically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to wait until okay. July. We have, he has to wait for July on yeah. this budget. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like oh, as soon as okay. possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless he wants to appeal to the generosity of the finance committee. That reserve is going yeah. down fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not this reserve. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, what do we have in it from this year? Yeah, Dan, mm -hmm. June, June 1st. Okay. Make the call. <laughs> But I do see what you're saying is we, it seems confusing that we have one thing going into capital, one thing staying in the budget. It's kind of, kind of, kind of both furnishings. Yeah. But, but also dollar differential. I mean, Dan's is relatively inexpensive and I think we're talking, once yeah. you get up to $7,500, it's more of a mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Yeah. capital yeah. level item. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think capital is over 10, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? 25. Over 2,500? Thousand. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are we going to do what um, John suggested and keep a portion of that in mind? Budget? Like a couple of thousand of that? So we can do the revolving or is that just going to be gone completely? Well, for the amount that got moved to capital, how many booths are you getting for that? I could probably get seven. Seven and how many yeah. do we need total? Uh, the full seven plus if I'm doing the table things. No, but I mean, um, if, if we bought all the seven, it was all brand new, how mm -hmm. soon would something logically need to be replaced after that? I, I wish I had a car neck hat. I, yeah. I mean, as long as they're cared for, I mean, they should at least have a five to 10 year lifespan. Yeah. The ones we have, I bought, I think, nine years ago. Yeah. But accidents do happen, they get dropped, they get bent. So I would think if we wanted to do that, which which makes some sense, but I don't know that we would start that right now because everything's gonna be brand new. So that's absolutely, again, I just wanted to, because I understand you guys are focused on this year, but again, we were 
told to think of the five year plan. Yeah. So that's what I'm mm -hmm. basing yeah. it on. Yeah. So if you say no this year, but yes, Jazz, it'll be in next year. And it would be like a thousand dollars a year, maybe would be good. Yeah, that would be one booth a year. That would be one booth a year. Yeah. And then we start putting the one in. And I think this being in capital now is good because you'll most you can try to get it out of free cash or something like that, as opposed to right now. If you put this in this budget, we've got to take it out of somewhere else. We have a lot of leeway again this year. The only election we have is our annual. It's the next fiscal year that we're going to get whacked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely I would be for doing that. Just starting it later. Oh, and there was also the decrease in my codification because I put an extra supplement in there because I thought more of the zoning stuff was going to pass at the last town meeting, which didn't, so that was put on hold. Any other questions for Tom? Uh, the clerk, the clerk. Mm -hmm. We're all running together. Mm -hmm. All set? Good. Okay. The Conservation Commission. Say hello. Say hello. Yeah, I survived the move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little less room. So I'm 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 hoping that I can get some help with maybe buying a, a five drawer file cabinet. Yeah. I have all fours right now and they're really full, even though I've been purging each time we move. <laughs> um, we still have a, a lot of files, so. I know. I know. No other change. Planning board. Put our office supply for six hundred dollars. How are we doing on the scanning? Slowly. Slowly. Very slowly. It's extremely cumbersome and tedious, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping when we move over here, we can make better use of Dean and have her do it a couple hours a week and make some progress on that. It's, it's not something anybody can do because you're also going to be computer savvy. Yeah. She is. To enter the information that you're scanning into the computer and be able to save it properly. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you could make a small disaster obviously so Jim, what, where's it getting saved right now so when you scan like the big it's just know, safe that we got we got the old computer out of the um uh, town treasurer's office and we save it to the computer then we then put onto a uh, uh external hard drive no a uh thumb drive, thumb drive. Thumb drive. Thumb drive. yeah so it's still onto the computer but it's also on a thumb drive so it's it's essentially bad the, the files the drawing file is backed up to a thumb drive. Mm -hmm. So presumably once we are here, we will have storage space on the town server and we can start backing up to that. We have no contact, no connection with it. Well, and if the, if we're successful in the grant application that David made and we wind up going with that laser, Eesh. laser cache with Northampton, the very first thing they did was they went to planning and building and said we're going to pilot by taking everything you have and they store everything by parcel um, and then you can put in whatever metadata you want but that there will be some implementation dollars associated with that and that would be <coughs> a good way to kick it off and then once we had the process nailed down we could easily hire temp help you know once you know exactly how you want things coded and then get well, people to come in and take that well, stuff. When in. we first got the scanner, it was also the first year we had a, we had just adopted the um, senior tax work off and the veterans tax work off. And there, were, if you remember, there was a lot of enthusiasm that that would be something that would be a win-win situation. And as it has turned out, that has been very slow in rolling out. Um, in fact, it would have been. For senior tax work off when we were in the senior center, it would have been very convenient, mm -hmm. but it just that has not gotten any traction. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully that might. I think Treasury's office has just started working with someone in the program. So yeah, we have we have two in town hall now. 
Um, and now also, um, the superintendent, Annie uh, had, McKenzie had mentioned at one point that it would be very easy to send over a student for specific items. That for might be something hours. where they come yeah. over for an hour a week or an yeah. hour or two a week. Have we checked with UMass oh. yet? I know I asked a couple times if there's someone doing a... But that, this, this is more like, I mean, to be honest with you, grunt work. Like, so what we talked to UMass about was doing um, like yeah, an I, internship program, which would be... Yeah. higher level work than this this is busy work you know getting these things in I mean, but, it, but, it, but it takes computer savvy yeah. to do this busy work absolutely you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. they have an engineering department over there, there that they have to do this oh thing. yeah so I'm sure an hour of time is probably right. going to be they get paid yeah. internships yeah in the engineering department they're not going to no, they're going to want to do computer programming. They're not going to yeah. want to do. Yeah. Yeah. David wanted to speak to this. Yes, yeah, so we have a Hampshire College student coming over to do an internship with us. Uh, he's into computers, so he's going to have him working on 5G technology rollout kind of stuff. But we can certainly provide some hours doing scanning. Okay. Good. Good. Back to $600. It'll be good for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the point I was trying to make is I think the cavalry is coming because if we get this grant, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for Tim and you guys to put your heads together and say this is exactly how we want this stored for public access as well as, as private access. And you can, you can turn rights on and off, so you can make some things public, you can keep other things private. But part of that implementation, they wanted to use planning and building as the pilot. Yep. And so if we were successful with the grant, we're actually going to have resources to do that. And they don't even have the scanner that you guys have, so they're really excited. So Those are probably the, the two most overwhelmed departments yeah. with paper right now. The anyway. ones that will benefit yeah. the most from it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lifesaver. Yeah, when we get this on the board, because yeah. there is so much time yeah. spent. Yeah. Even the highway department can be using this. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. scanner yeah. Department yeah. Department yeah. has a multitude of uses in the town. Once yeah. we, the, the problem mm -hmm. getting somebody to load all this stuff in, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's slow. Mm -hmm. In an hour, they probably get through, you know, a couple dozen drawings. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're still ongoing with the computers that we have here at this desk, but it has saved so much time and yeah. paper mm -hmm. oh, it, it's it's entered once and David just sends it out to everyone so, so that that does I think if Jennifer does that mm -hmm. or Jennifer I don't does. eat credit <laughs> 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 it does raise one question about the transition the move I understand that a, a lot of the physical costs of the move are covered you know, time for so, time and truck time and truck um, we don't have a um, a connection to the town's computer server at, or server at this point so there will be some extra work involved in and I'm not sure whose budget that's in or if it's in, in anyone's budget but you know, we don't have a phone line we don't have wiring um, we do have a computer mm -hmm. surplus uh, but are you moving in next door we are Yes. Yes, there's Ethernet connections in there. Okay. And there's a vacant phone line in Town Hall that I've been saving. We, 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 don't, we don't need, we, we we don't need a phone line. Bill's talking in general, yeah. yeah. so we don't want a phone line. Okay. Call your line up. It'll be uselessly. They do. They'll build during the day and I'm at night. They've been working out well for a while. Yeah. So, but I'm not sure where. Is that part of the budget? Is that part of the move covered somewhere? There's, there's, there's no cost to it. Yeah. There's, there's no cost. There's, there's, just there's no cost. The, the room is wired already, okay. and Northeast IT will make a planning board server file folder as part of our eight hours okay. in the budget. There's no cost to, to, to moving the electronic portion of it. You'll, you'll immediately connect to Town Hall server. You'll immediately be on the system. Great. It's already set up. Now back to Jim's question. Back to the six hundred dollar cut. <laughs> six hundred dollar cut on the supplies. Yeah, based on history. Based on what? History. History. Oh, that we haven't used that much. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it it does it it is peaks and valleys. That's for yeah. sure. And mm -hmm. part of it is uh, I have been using, in addition to using Dee Dee's services, I also just bring her the pile of documents, and she finds 
envelopes <laughs> somewhere. I think yeah, I think yeah, based on usage ninety five uh, two fifty. We don't we don't order stationary anymore, we print our own. Yeah. We, we we print labels. I've got a lifetime supply of labels from a place I used to work with each clothes. <laughs> That's good. Such a good so yeah. the Public <laughs> administration <laughs> by the petty office. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, when I left, <laughs> when, they, when they close, I probably have, I'll see what I have. I have thousands right. of them. So I'll give you money back if you bring them <laughs> The specific reason uh, I think we wanted to be here tonight was because of, as others have alluded to, we're trying to focus on a five-year plan for the 100s. Mm -hmm. And um, as we have mentioned many times before, but it always bears repeating, thanks for the SWOT analysis, Molly. Yep, it's great welcome. and very helpful. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we have a workable situation at the moment, but uh, we have a situation where I can't take on what Jim is doing. Jim couldn't take on what I'm doing. So if either of us is no longer with the planning board for whatever reason, um, you're going to very quickly spiral into a need for a planning department. And um, I just want to be sure everyone is thinking of it. We're not asking, you know, we're adding a $100,000 Human Resources Department this year. Uh, that's the budget of the planning department in Belchertown, which has one planner uh, with dues and, and the like. So that's, I don't want to say, I don't want to say we have to grab it this year because this is the only year you're talking about our budget. But I, I do want it to be very clear that there, there is an event horizon out there that's getting closer. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, and probably it's going to come up quickly if we need to go to a full planning department uh, or even a very skilled temp. Uh, it, it's going to come up quickly and it's not going to necessarily respect the, the five years. Unless you both, you both want to resign this year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the year. <laughs> and that $600 is going to be nothing at that point. <laughs> no, that's, that's why we aren't going to be worried about $600. So I just wanted to be sure that's out on the table as, as we're going forward. It will, I'm sure we will give you as much We'll have this discussion again. We'll give you as much warning as we can, but um, you're very dependent on two people being able to do the job. And um, we do have a five-member board. Uh, the others have other demands, other experiences. You've been the town has been very fortunate, as Linda said. You know, you, you deal, you work with the skill sets that people bring to the job, and. For the last 33 years, we've been able to make this work. Uh, and there's an election every year. I mean, it's possible, that, you know, at some point there may be some some skill sets that do come to the table that are helpful. But for for our purposes, are you? Um, I think what I'm hearing you say, Bill, is if you're not going to address this for five years, that may be too long. Is, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> But, but not this year. Like not, not, not this year. Okay. Not this year. Right. Um, but it may not fit into the nicely laid out plan well, where we said education. Like Bill said, you know, yeah. neither one of us planning on going anywhere. But you know, the man up above has other plans sometimes. Sure. And if that happens, it'd be a really relatively quick reaction to something. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm just thinking more like retirement. And I see retired from one job, but not this job. Retired from one job, semi retired, pick up a new one, but I still keep this one. Jim, if you stand up at the end of one of your meetings and say, That's it, I'm out, I heard the voice. 
But, I mean, that's something that you always have to have in the back of your mind anyway, because, you know, shit does happen, and, you know, you never know when things are going to take place, you know, and, and unfortunately, that's the way, way it is. So those are some things that you, you know, and you have the most knowledge on the board between the two of you. Um, I'm not saying that the other board members don't contribute, but, um, you know, Joe's been there a long time. He has a wealth of knowledge also. Um, and I just, you can't replace that in a heartbeat. You know, that's hard to do. So we have tried so. to lay a foundation. We have this contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission where they do a certain amount of backroom document preparation. They draft bylaws, at least the first draft, so we don't have to go out and find everything from scratch. So there, there is a, a system there. There's a structure, but it is, uh, it, it would very quickly go into needing to have either a, a contract with something like well, what the Conservation Commission has with Janice, but mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to snowball quickly when it happens. Mm -hmm. So um, we're trying to get things set up so that there will be some continuity. But could you do? I mean, again, not not now, but maybe like literally over the course of the next year. Could you to put your heads together and actually like draft out for us a transition plan, like what one might look like and what what we would have to do in in what order. That, I mean, that would be really options, options, like contract versus employee. Yeah, yeah. 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 what the different other communities permutations that do different things. I know a building yeah. inspector, uh, Franklin County, does a regional. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, is there is there any regional planning? Well, PVP. Besides, PVP. besides PV? No, mm -hmm. no, not at that level. Not mm -hmm. On a small, you know, not on a county level? Not, there's, there's regional planning resources on the planning level, but we also do a lot of permitting. Yeah. And that you know, people aren't set up out, outside the community is not set up to come in and do permitting for you. Um, but I think uh, Belchertown a few years ago did go through a transition because Doug Albertson, who is uh, on the who is the town planner in Belchertown, was a member of the planning board when they decided to go with a professional planning department. So he made the, the transition at that point. So I will talk to him about. Because uh, I mean, just just getting all of the um, paperwork that we've just been talking about, all of those files and paperwork scanned and into some orderly system. I mean, we can be working on that now yes, and yes. have that in place. So that there may be other things like that that you guys know about that. Yeah, that's we can be doing all along the way to put ourselves in a better position. Yeah, that's going to be a big help to get more of it scanned. It and with the scanner here at Town Hall, where uh, and, and we have some time, some of Dee Dee's time, Tim has some of Dee Dee's time, um, you know, we'll have access to it. So it, it, that's going to be a much uh, bigger resource here, I think, mm -hmm. than it is where we have it now. Big problem is Dee Dee's time has gotten to be very limited. Yeah, <laughs> three Dee Dee's. She's up to 55 <laughs> hours, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's we'll work on that. Needs to be yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's and if you want to see this um, laser fish, you can actually, if you go to the city of Northampton and just type in, in the search field, just type in a random address, the search will return to you a whole bunch of different documents and permits and so you, you'll get a sense of how it can be used and it doesn't mean that we have to implement it the way they have but I think you'll see the power of it pretty quickly. Well anything that has a layering that allows every department to put in their particulars so and then you can allow the public to look at it but also um, define it for other departments to right. only look at. I mean, it's going to really help with uh, this whole idea of um, uh, every single time we were asked for public documents. Because yeah, public records requests. Yeah, public records, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. They say every and all permits associated with from 1984 to present, it gets to be crazy. Mm -hmm. This is going to be ex 
the best thing that we've ever done in a very, very long time that really needs to have everybody's push behind it. So, well. Anything else from the planning board? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, Board of Appeals, no mm -hmm. one's Didn't here. Submitted budgets from level funded then. Level funded, no change. Insurance budget. So that uh, we we won't know this final number until after town meeting, but we were told at the MMA that uh, they were going to go up two and a half percent. So that's the increase that we talked that I put in there. But that number, we won't know that number until June. David, can we, can you ask Mitch to get us an annualized figure for the things that have uh, gone on and come off? Yep. Because I think that's where you ran into a problem last year, was you went 2.5% what was voted over the year before. However, we had added numerous vehicles. And so when you looked at the annualized premium and then you got the 2% increase, there was that gap. Um, but um, I know Maya always used to annualize premiums as long as you guaranteed you weren't going out to bid. So. All right, thank you. I'll take a look at that. Yeah. added the 2.5%. Right. Okay. So the buildings, Senior Center, Town Hall, North Hadley Village Hall, and Russell School Operations make the remaining budgets. Uh, the, the major change is theoretically we're selling North Hadley Village Hall, so I put no budget in there at all. And then the other is for the Senior Center, um, we won't have a building to operate, but we will have rent to pay over at the uh, Most Holy Redeemer. So that rent is included in the Senior Center operations, which will be subsidized by rental payments from the library project. Everything else is normal. Has the um, DPW seen this? Do they yeah. have any input, Gary? Yes, yeah, so yeah. they, they took a look at that, and they, they also have maintenance budgets for the senior center which are even under 490. Mm -hmm. So I met with Chris Okafor and, uh, and he, he apparently talked to Gary. Good. And the North Hadley Hall, I feel like we should have something in there. Just in the event the sale goes past, you know, the first half into July, past July of this year. I don't think we're going to have it sold by July. It's warmer weather then. <laughs> I want to get it on the market in the spring. It's a prime time to sell. But don't have to have any heat in there. Yeah. I mean, we can put yeah. this in the reserve as well. But <laughs> I, think, I think we can leave it as is right now. And if we need to do something for the fall town meeting, okay. we can do it then. OK. So just leave it as is for right now. Yeah, that sounds fair. Unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. Unforeseen. You never know, it might get real warm weather. Posted machine rental, are you going to adjust that here or later? What's that? The what rental? The, I, I mentioned to David the postage machine rental. I did drop that cost. We renegotiated some new contracts. So it's going to go down, but David David thought I did a really good job instead of just a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, I had said something, but I think he already published it after the fact. And I just want to make so sure. So it's not 1500 It's not 1500 I'm sorry. I did really good, though. I did bring it down under uh, five. Okay. But yeah, 1500 and that And that's the postage machine and the copier. Those are, those are serious. Like, I mean, we could do without them, I guess, but <laughs> not really. Do we not? Except for her to get out her bills other than yeah. that. Yeah, especially if, depending on the timing of us having to do the polling location. Like, so, yeah. It, yeah. It's How many desert. rolls of stamps you're going to need for the water? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, yeah that's not happening. The next thing is to come up with a schedule. Those are just two. Oh, we've already signed contracts, so. Okay, so that, that wraps up the town hall. Well, hang on, so are you going to change that? 
Yeah, just put a little. He just uh, circled it. Circle okay, so <laughs> we, we've got it circled here. <laughs> I was <laughs> joking. <laughs> he was taking <laughs> under advice. <laughs> Don't worry, we got it covered. Um, easy. We're going to um, discuss the schedule for the next uh, remaining divisions and suggested dates. At, you're going to do one at each one of our meetings. Is that what you plan? Yeah. yeah. So public safety um, 200 budget will be March 6th. Public Works budget and review of articles on March 20th, uh, April 3rd, Human Services um, and Culture and Recreation, and review of articles on April 3rd, and on April 10th will be Education, Debt, Unappropriated State Assessments, Benefits, and that's it. And that gives you a week to uh mop up if there's anything sort of outstanding. Does that schedule work for the finance committee? March, what they just said, March 6th. March so 6th, far. 20th, 3rd, and 10th. Those at, at each one of our select board meetings is what works. Should work. Those dates are in your uh, posted and posted announcements for tonight's meeting if you need to refer back. April 3rd, April 10th. Yeah. Are those all at 6.30, are we saying, or 7, or to be determined time? Well, when, when do you want to do it? I thought we said 6.30 on all of them. I would like to do 6.30. I mean, there, 6 are, regu there are regular meetings, but I would like to start okay. at 6.30. Yeah, okay. Right. Is there a way if it's short, we can get out? Sounds good. You're optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I like to move things along. <laughs> Town meeting warrant. Okay, so town meeting warrant 5.3, item 5.4, and 6.2 can all be taken out as one piece because they're all about basically the same thing. We have a draft warrant, there's 31 articles on it. Uh, Mr. Nyhart has said that it's signed bylaw can wait till the fall, so that. Yeah, we've talked between planning and ourselves and. We thought that it would be wise at this point to hold off on those changes. Well, we had on the on the consent. Um, that's mine. <laughs> I don't know. It's me. I don't know. It's you. I don't know. <laughs> Who's bothering bother me on a Wednesday night? You know me by now. Um, I gotta get this thing over here. Where's that? So what was on there was the adult use marijuana general bylaw. That's still going to be. That's going to be 24. So, is that going to be your presentation that night? Can yes. We, yes. So we can say that. And uh, planning board adult use. There's two of them: a marijuana zoning bylaw reserved. The, the zoning bylaw. That's going to be a, the general bylaw that the chief Mason has requested. So we'll present it. But to answer questions, he would be the obvious person to answer them. Legal question, police question on that one. So, so the 24, the 25th uh, article about planning board adult use, is that going to be yours that night? Bylaw. I'm not sure from how you're reading it, I'm, and I don't have the whole thing. So, what's 24? One's a general bylaw, one's a zone. One was the a general. Adult, the general bylaw is, it, it, it is, it is the Chief Mason one about the public use. Right. Okay, that's 24. The okay. 25th one is, is planning board bylaw. adult use marijuana zoning bylaw. Yes. Yes. And that's so yours. that one's on. That's yes. ours. That will okay, be Okay, you're on for that one too. That's for growing them? Growing and selling and everything in okay. between. And how about the um, Board of Health one? Do we have to vote on that? No, or is that part of the general? Board. Board of Health is handled by a different legal process. It doesn't okay. go to town meeting. Okay. okay. Um, planning Board MS4, Stormwater Zoning Bylaw. We're hoping to have that, but we're not positive. So it's a placeholder for right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That will be a package of things to conform our current provisions to the new standards. Okay. And Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is drafting for us on that. A little better idea of at our next meeting how that's going to stand. And that's a two part thing. There's a general bylaw, mm -hmm. update the general and update the existing general and update the existing zones. So there's, I think there's two for that one. Okay. 
to tie together. Do you know if that's going to be able to be layered over to GIS for the water and the sewer and that? There's no really mapping with it, but it does affect some of that stuff again. But, but it's not really a layer. There's no mapping involved. It's just words. Okay. But I think the the uh, that's the stuff you're going to be standing in per parcel eventually anyway. Most of that's on those plans. Well, so there's no real scanning on the MS4. That's just when. No, but I mean you're going to have the uh, drainage for the properties on the uh, on the maps. W with their site plan approval with drainage, yes, that yeah. will be on the map. That is is or will be on maps, yes. Okay. But David had made a comment that MS4 in part depends on <coughs> whether the drainage is site could or just general generalized or actually flows into a watershed that yes. reaches the Connecticut River so there might be something that will need we we have no maps of that that we're that I'm aware of no that no that the that that's something I think the uh, highway department has been working on the last co couple yeah, of a few years last few, few years, years. Yeah. well it's been in effect for a while but it's been updated about a year ago when uh, um, the gentleman that just left, he was helping. He, he was kicking that off and saying they're updating a lot of that work. You know, and some some of those streams are on the county maps, but they go through the private property, and we don't know. We never really addressed some of them, whether they were private or town owned at some. Point. Yeah, there, there's a lot of complexity in that, but yeah. from the highway DPW point of view. Okay, so that one will hold um, zoning signs. That's been withdrawn, uh, postponed until the fall. Yeah, postponed. That's the one postponed. Postponed to the senior overlay district. That, that, that might be withdrawn. It might be withdrawn. The, it's yeah. on hold right now. It's on hold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And is private way, Megan's way, is that ours? Is that a petition? That's my petition, right? That's, petition. that's a letter from the property owner, which. Uh, did I transmit that to you? I think yeah. I did. The, we're, we're waiting. We, they have never. We don't have the as-built plan yet, but the surveyor is working on the as-built plan to get that to us in time. Okay. And don't we have to do the whole, like, walk through and all that you stuff? You've got to have public hearing, you got to do the walk out through, you got to take votes to lay out. And there's a whole process we have to go through. And whether we, we, whether we can do, do it. Depends on how spring? quickly we can uh, move on this. If not spring, then fall. Is this. Um, Quinlan? Or Megan's Way is Quinlan. Quinlan, yeah. okay. Yeah. South Huntington? Yes, yeah. top at the top. Yeah. Okay, so that was, I think those were the only zoning. That was all built to be accepted anyway, so. There are three yes. items we should talk about. What's that? All right. So there's three articles that, we sh that are not on the warrant that we should talk about placing on the warrant. The first one has, to, first two have to do with the, um, North Hadley Village Hall, the ball field in particular. Okay, so um, there's concern that the ball field is protected by Article 97 of the Massachusetts Constitution, which means you cannot sell protected recreational land. And so there are two articles that I'm proposing and they're in draft form at this moment. They're in your board box. First one is to petition the general court to release land from Article 97 protection and then the other one is to designate uh, Zaturka Park as compensatory park uh, recreational land so if we take it out of the ball field out of protection we have to find some other place to replace that protected park land the ball field is what an acre or something like that a little over yes yeah, a little over and Zaturka Park's four acres so that should satisfy Boston so I recommend putting those two articles on. We have to open up the warrant. Yeah, but let's wait till the, you know, have, wait, wait till the, the lady sings. Um, the other is something that emerged in the last couple of days is that even though we have an easement through the Legion parking lot, uh, Eversource needs a non-exclusive utility easement in that property and the attorneys tell me that this is important and necessary. This may also obtain at the fire substation site up on on uh, River Drive. So for right now we have a 
warrant article to authorize the Hadley Select Board to grant a non-exclusive utility easement for the Eversource uh, for the Senior Center. We may want to add the library. Not the library, but the fire substation. This is 46 middle. That's not going to cover. Why would we need it for North Hadley? We're not, we're not taking an easement through anybody. Just in case you need one. Why? I We're not going through anybody's well, are, property. But are they um, running, sometimes when they run an underground wire from the street to the s location, yeah. they want to use it there? So I talked to Phil Palumbo and he said this is probably a good idea. He's working on some language for that uh, purpose. Why would they need it for the senior center? You're going to go through the... Oh, the electricity is going over there? Well, no. Yeah. Well, it's going to run through... The Legion? From yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought, the, I thought electricity was running off of Middle Street. Evidently, no, I guess not. Well, through yeah. that easement, you know how we switch property. Yeah, 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 but, but I thought that was just for sewer and they're water. They're going to run it down. Everything's going to oh. run through that, the water, oh, the sewer, okay. electric, all that's going through the middle there. So even though on here it has a Middle Street address, that has nothing to do with the lo where the easement's coming from. Right. It's no. coming from Russell. Okay. The, so for the fire station, you're not putting a transformer on the property, right? You're putting a transformer on the pole. Mm -hmm. And and for the senior center, there's going to be a transformer near the senior well, center. Yeah. I can see the senior center. The yeah. wire running on the Legion property is a different thing. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you want to make sure that they have access and we have access to it. Mm -hmm. For the North Hadley fire station, if the, if the transformer is on the pole and we own the wires, why would you give Eversource an easement? I don't think we sh would need to. So here's what I suggest that we do. Okay, so we have the three articles which are now it appears that they're required to be on the warrant. They're not on the warrant. Um, once they're on the warrant, we can adjust them so that we can address all the issues that I can't answer at this moment. Okay. Um, we can just pass over them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, this this is just holding them on, not about not the. the yeah. The, the not the the place. Place. Okay. Yeah. And, and, I, and so again, I apologize, but this just came up in the literally in the last 42 hours, 48 hours. So. But the ironic thing is about this and giving them the right of way and doing an article is that they may be doing this before May 1st. They're going to be running a line through because we just talked. Phil and I just went over and talked with. Uh, uh, the Legion people and informed them that this may start March or April of them running a line through yeah, there already. So, so Phil is now aware of this and he's uh, he said that there's plenty of work to do on the site that does not involve the running in electricity. So until when? Until after, after time meeting. It would have to be after town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's aware of this. If you wanted to my recommendation no, is I'll accept, accept the three articles <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. talk to Phil, make sure you're comfortable with what they are. You can always pull them off, and you can always amend them, but at least now you have placeholders for all three. All right. We need you want to me to make a motion to open the town meeting? Uh, Warren? Yeah. Sorry, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor, vote me the Warren. Aye. 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 So, motion to place these. Oh, yeah, a motion now to place these three, three new three articles on, on the yeah. warrant. Um, what is it? For it's the Article 97 North Hadley. for North Hadley, um, Paul, the transfer of that Article 97 land to Zaturka Park, and the easement uh, on our easement for Eversource. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to close the warrant. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So, <coughs> thank you very much. I know that uh, it's always uncomfortable to accepting articles after the warrant has been closed, but again, these things came up, and if they weren't legally required, um, I would uh, certainly have deferred them to the fall, but it looks like we need them right away. So we've talked, anything else you want to discuss on 
North Hadley, or should we build the senior center? Could we just uh, talk real quickly on North Hadley? Because we were going to talk about the title search tonight and maybe paying somebody to do the title search, but it looks like you found it. So I don't know if how that would work exactly. If well, uh, So what I have provided to the planning board liaison and to the building inspector are three deeds relating to the uh, North Hadley Hall property. There are two 1867, 64, 64 deeds for the North Hadley Hall proper. And then there is a, which is what those are. Mm -hmm. And then there is a 1920 or 1917 deed, 1914, I think, of the ball field, the t which was taken by eminent domain to provide a playground to the school which create the lap that's the language that created the article 97 mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do a full title search okay. yeah I, I went back to find the source deeds um, I did not do, do a full title search in the sense of verifying that the town has not otherwise disposed of any of those properties or put liens in any of those properties and okay. I probably can't do the title search for you because I am a Town official. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what title search is going to typically cost for a parcel like that? Uh, <coughs> Jennifer's got some information. You put him on the spot. I, I got a quote. Yeah. I didn't know Bill was working on this as well. So I got a quote from someone, and I think it was $110 an hour. And he suggested because it is a buyer's responsibility to do the title search um, and do the certified title search where you make sure that the things are not encumbered he recommended just doing a location of the title which was copy of page which sounds like bill has already done for us <coughs> and he said let the uh, buyer do the certified making sure that we have not encumbered or sold the property since then let them do that yeah, yeah. It, but it, do it, we know that this covers the entire property i believe it does i can't say for sure could randy would randy be able uh, to he it might up? be able to make something more of it uh, i just hate to have some sliver of you know yep. land mm -hmm. come out which is what typically so, happens uh yes well more likely that there has been a sliver added but um that consists that's not a huge parcel when you put those two together but they clearly cro cross-reference each other and they were recorded simultaneously so I am reasonably comfortable that those are the the source deeds for the property. Whether there have been extra parcels acquired afterwards, I didn't try to determine. Uh, you know, you're you're looking through uh, over 150 years of deeds to the town. Yeah. <clears throat> I was able to make an educated guess that it probably was in the 1860s because that's when the vintage when the building was built. Uh, but I could have been wrong. The town could have acquired it earlier. But it seems that they did acquire it then. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be the starting point. Uh, I think that may be all the realtors asking for, just to be able to say what the what what do you look for? What book do you turn to? Right. So. Uh, so you don't. That's my that's my best guess of the, at the starting point. So yeah, do we? I guess I'm still unclear. Do we? Do you recommend that we do a title search now and kind of verify everything? Whoever you sell solid? it to is going to be required to do a full title search yeah. by their bank anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought we were just trying to head off any just last minute surprises. Yeah, so. I didn't want it to be like a three month delay on the sale or four month or six month because no, of title we, issues. Well, we've, never been, when, we've never been able to find it before now. Yeah. I yeah mean, that I, was why. That. Nobody knew where it was. No, nobody was able to locate it, and nobody was able to find it in town meeting votes or anything. So um, that was why we went to the title examiner and asked for a quote because you know all of this time we haven't found this information. Was that Father have it in his archives? Online. Hmm? Bill? <laughs> online, but no, uh, the Physically. index. You have to go back into the card indexes at the registry. At the so I had a closing today, so I. Uh, Spent about half an hour afterwards doing this. Um, so, can we ask David then to turn this over to the realtor? You may want, you know, if, if you want to get a second opinion or have someone spend some more time on it, 
uh, you could give those three deeds to the title examiner and just, uh, you have two there, and the <coughs> third one I emailed you. Uh, give them to the title examiner and ask them to do a run, just, just a, a simple rundown of it to, or um, you know, at least you, you have a starting point, you can see whether anything's been added. Um, it very, it's very possible there may have been something added oh, 20 years later they needed an extra, little extra space or something. Um, I didn't look at every deed. So the indexes are grantor indexes, what you've given away, and grantee indexes, what you've received. Mm -hmm. I have not looked to see every piece of Great. land that the town has received mm -hmm. since 1860 related to this. Right. Um, that's that's where the time that's where the time gets burned up. He said it would be two to three hours at the most. And it's hundred and ten dollars. I think it was one hundred fifty because I calculated it. Yeah, sorry, around seven hundred fifty dollars of was this whole scope that he the, suggested or something. The additional above the two to three hours was yeah. doing the certified thing, which he really does not recommend. Yeah. Okay, no, okay, yeah. So he, yeah. he really just said two to three hours at the most, and I sent him what we had um, because. The intern this summer had found a couple of like the playground and things like that. So I sent him those, and he said with those documents, he was pretty sure he could bring it in under two hours. So I mean, I mean, I think it makes sense to just I think it does head too. it off just in case we run into any problems, and yeah. then and then uh, the certified absolutely <coughs> buy those. Mm -hmm. so yeah, just a few hundred bucks. <laughs> It helps move it along. problems. You, you can't light a match to the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got struck by lightning and it won't burn, so get over it, Julius, okay? When I'm sitting on the other side of the transaction and I'm representing a buyer, I can't tell you how much, how frustrated I am when I find the title defects yeah, that yeah. the seller listed the property without making any effort to right. clear. Yeah. Right. So I certainly would encourage you to take a little deeper dive, but at least you have a starting point now. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for doing that. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it, for sure. Yeah. <coughs> Anything to move this project yeah. along. Yeah, I agree. I drive <laughs> yeah. by it twice a day. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can. All right, I, you knuckled me under. Make a motion. I, yeah, I was about to do that. I'll make a motion that we approve about $500 worth of title search work to Cool. Just ahead. see if there are any issues with the title. Make sure that's clear. I'll second that. Any further discussion on that? No. Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you said you sent me the other one. <laughs> <email> today. <laughs> uh, I sent you an email <coughs> yesterday. I think with, yesterday, with the <coughs> the plan, the survey of the whole parcel, the deed of the playground, and. Um, the court case that established the 98, Article 97 applicability. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll forward that to you, Jennifer, so you have the other deed that Bill's talking about. Thank you. And just while we have you here, one question or one question I have is all the potential problems I saw with the sale of this property was the Article 97, the title, and of course the historical restrictions. But I mean, we aren't going to do anything about the historical restrictions right now. Is there anything else you could see that would be? potential problem when we go to sell this that we can preemptively take action on right now well I, what it, it seemed to founder on the last time was uh, the, the, the limited uses allowed there yeah I mean, it's it a municipal building can is somewhat exempt but yeah. once it gets sold it has to conform to current zoning or Establish grandfathering, or um, go for a variance, yeah. which is a hard, uh, hard road to hoe. Mm -hmm. Variances are very difficult to get get in Massachusetts Le uh, <coughs> legally. Um, sometimes the ZBA acts as a safety valve that says, "Yeah, well, let's just go ahead and say it's okay, uh, just to get mm -hmm. this off the uh, starting blocks." But uh, that's going to be your, the biggest stumbling bar block. Someone's going to buy it for an intended purpose, and they will probably make an offer subject to um, subject to approval. Yeah, yeah, but we <coughs> can't do anything about that right now. So well, no, yeah. but if it gets appealed, 
the ZBA grants the appeal, and the appeal is, a, is a, I mean, if they grant the variance and the Z, and somebody appeals it, the vast majority of cases, the appeal is gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, the appeal is upheld and a variance is gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and the difference, too, now is that there's a bigger piece of property, including the ball field. Right. Which yeah. wasn't available before. Right. But it's just a matter of. Well, what, you still have to. You have to. It's not available. Right. Right. Not, right. Until yeah. Yeah. not yet. Yeah. 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 Subject to. Yeah. And, 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 right. And you yeah. still got the variance concern. Yeah. So the, the, the use. Yeah. You're in, well, a, you're in yeah. a limited business zone. And the historical restrictions in my mind are pretty restrictive too, but it, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Well, so that was. You've those actually are. put those on yet, have you? Mm, that's no, part no. of the contract right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which I thought should have been changed. There's too many restrictions. So what? Yeah. I forwarded that other date to you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So we're going to go over the Senior Center, Library, and Fire Station. Jane, do you have anything you want to share tonight on the Senior Center? Ever forward. Ever forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> we have the bid, and it's all set to roll. And move on they'll be moving out of the senior center at the, the end senior of march. center is closing the last three days of march for the move to take place that's wednesday thursday and friday and we will be open for business april 1st most holy redeemer mm -hmm. good. sounds good mm -hmm. shovel to the ground yeah library uh library we met uh we met last night and we did the um the flip book, which was very exciting. Um, I can't tell you how many pages of uh, detailed diagrams we looked at that showed cornices and HVAC and all sorts of neat stuff. Um, but it was really nice to see, you know, that whole plan coming together. Um, so we continue to be uh, relatively on track. I think that um, we're likely going to be getting that bid out. Um, which will put us in a position probably the early part of May, but not May 1st, so, you know, within uh, seven to 10 days after that, to <coughs> be in a position to start moving ahead with the demolition. Okay, that's all I got. Right, and sub fire station went before the planning board last week. And we had a couple of things that we needed to iron out, uh, which I'm bringing before you tonight. Um, the planning board wanted us to ask about the drainage um, regarding drainage overflow. Uh, could not find a bylaw um, on this. I could not let's see again. The only Hadley bylaw that I could find is the illicit connections and discharges to storm sewer. System is that what you were talking about? But there's there is no zone by there is no town bylaw on. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it. There's no t given town bylaw that says a private entity or business cannot tie into a town drainage system. It's been a long-standing uh, policy of the board of select that they requested the planning board probably 40 years ago that nobody ties into a town drainage system. If you have a drainage on your property, you drain it, you take care of the drainage on your property and you don't give it to the town. The state under MS4 on Route 9 has an actual policy. Nobody ties into the state drainage system. And a town kind of follows that for the most part around their municipal drainage systems. And this system, the overflow is going to, for the fire station, is proposed to tie into the town drainage system. Which, you know, supposedly they've said it's okay. Well, the Board of Selectmen have requested the Planning Board not allow that. So the question we have is we would like to see in writing that it is allowed, and then what do we do when a private business or citizen says, hey, well, if, why can't I tie into the town drainage system because you're allowing it? So, so we David, we you, you had a <coughs> conversation with Christopher? Yeah, so I met with Chris Okafor on this particular issue, and uh, unfortunately he was not able to meet with the architects prior to this meeting. He has a meeting set up for them on Friday, which is, there's no select board meeting in between Friday and your meeting 
next Tuesday. So he was discussing to me that, the, that there is on-site drainage, <coughs> a retention pond. He had some concerns about the viability of that uh, design for the neighborhood. Um, he wants to have a detailed discussion with the architect in order to come up with a solid recommendation, either a drainage system that leads to the to uh, water elsewhere, a brook or a river, or on-site drainage that would be viable and something that could uh, serve the purpose, not create mosquitoes, and uh, not be a, a headache for DPW to maintain. I think most everybody's going with the underground because of the health issues with the above ground ones, just like we did with the senior centers. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I would, I would so, be more, <coughs> so more what inclined would, to go that way. So what would you find most helpful on Tuesday next? Do you want a letter from Chris Okafor, countersigned by the chair of the select board? I, part of it is, is up to you, I think. I don't know whether we're looking. Jim's right. It's, it, 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 this has been the policy as long as I've been on the planning board. Uh, I, think that, I think we thought that it would be all right because we could, we haven't asked for it, but we're asking for an exemption of this town building because it's not being used 24 7 as would somebody's. Uh, private home or a private business or whatever of being there more than what anybody else is in there. There's yep. not going to be anything being discharged out of this building. Uh, but, but it's not a discharge out of the building. It's the rainwater that's going to be collected right. and the discharged. Rainwater. There's nothing, it's, there's nothing to do with occupancy. Either, even a, even any any building is there. Or someone went to built in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. It's not the water discharge from, you know, the discharge, the discharge from the building is going to the sewer, septic, the sewer town sewer. That's mm -hmm. right in front of the building. That's that's fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. It's the runoff from the from the driveway and the roof and stuff that is the concern. Yeah, and perfect. that's that's always there. And yeah. I have I have spoken you know, one person in particular who reminds me periodically that uh, and he isn't even aware of this issue, but. He reminded me recently that 32 years ago, uh, he was not allowed to tie into the municipal drainage system. So, you know, there. If you start, if well, you if you want to make exemptions, yeah, that's fine. I, I know, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm I'm less concerned about that if we can justify that this is a unique property. So, to mm -hmm. Joyce's the point Joyce was making, you know, it's municipally owned, and I'm sorry. I mean, we do have some privileges here. Um, and it's a municipal system. And it's a municipal system. But I, I'm hearing what you guys are saying that the genesis of this isn't necessarily the actual usage. It's the um, you know uh, impermeable surface runoff and all of that other stuff. So I mean, it's, I it's I definitely want to hear what Christopher has to say from an engineering standpoint before we do take a position. But I, I I'm not so much worried about some yeah. private residences that are we'll we'll give them your number uh, yeah. I, yeah. and no, actually you know, make, I, make sure I you no get those three numbers because this board's mm -hmm. contradicting themselves from what we did with the senior center we put an underground drainage in we put a grease trap in and they're changing the rules for this specific building and we don't know what's going to happen with this building down well, the John, road. Well, John, okay. we didn't take so, a vote yet. We said so we want to hear what Christopher I, has no, to say. I, you are co correct. The senior yeah. center did tie into the municipal drain, but I I believe that was grandfathered because yeah. it's part yeah. of, it just, it was already there. But that's mm -hmm. just the yeah. overflow. It's going to have the underground right. Right. drainage. Right, yeah. And, 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 this, and, the, and the, the overflow, this, the, uh, this, this system has a permeation system, yes. and the only, the overflow is going. Now, yes. to your point, why is it a pond as an underground system? You'd have to ask the people that are, well, this board and the people that are I've been, it. I've been, that's to, I've been to a bunch of seminars on the underground compared to the above ground, and I, I see the difference and I see the health issues that, that are being uh, exhausted from the underground, you know? So we also know that it's a, that is a basically a sand pile. Yeah. So it's going to drain very well. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you mean that the fire substation? The, lo yeah. the location. Yeah. That land is already pretty sandy. Yeah. 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 But I, I, again, we are in, 
we are we have been enforcing what we understand to be your directive which presumably was something that came from the DPW and it may be that <coughs> way back you know, 40 years ago the, there weren't enough pipes to handle everybody who wanted to tie in um, or even handle the streets that needed to be drained so I don't know if I don't know who is really in the center of the web who, who has their f fingers on all the pulses and I don't know is the, if I don't know what the piping is like off of Route 47 at Stockbridge Road things like that um, that all sort of factors I think that would inform your decision as to whether you want to approve a waiver so the select board are meeting tonight Chris is meeting with the architect on Friday your meeting on Tuesday, then the select board are meeting on Wednesday. So we have a time issue here. What, what I recommend that we do is that the chair and the, that Chris Okafor and the architect have a meeting and go over all the options. Chris develop a recommendation to the select board, which Joyce will endorse. So that'll be ready for your meeting on Tuesday, and the select board can ratify that in, that decision on the Wednesday. Okay, that, so basically work? we would be authorizing the chair to exercise her discretion in signing that and then bringing it back to yeah. us. So if Joyce reads it and says, uh oh, she, she could say, I'm <coughs> going to wait and have bring it back to the board. I guess I just feel personally like shouldn't need to tie into that as overflow I don't know I'm personally kind of against tying into overflow systems into our sewer system it's I mean, not it a is a bylaw it's 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 a drainage but I don't know I mean there's a <coughs> lot of room on that site and we should be you able to do something else I don't know how much the estimate is to put in the underground system no Jane, and that's why it would be helpful Jane, for Chris to sit and go through the yeah. yeah. about well they have their retention it ponds and things are already on it's the big, much bigger yeah. 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 on it mm -hmm. I mean it's already on the plan roughly and it's 250,000 that's what the senior center costs. that's a senior center but it's a much bigger impervious surface <laughs> with the yeah. building and the parking and you have better, and it's you have an better drainage up there, so you're going to have probably even half of that. Yeah, and that you think yeah. well, yeah. the your head. I mean, and, and that's why I'm you saying. Need I mean, to if, look if at those prices. And if Chris Okafor came back and said, "This is the throughput that we're talking about, and it's a relatively inconsequential impact," or we can spend a hundred thousand dollars. Then, and I, I would be inclined <coughs> to say, well, I, "Yeah, I think uh, let's not spend the hundred thousand." Generally, I agree with you. If we don't need to be putting anything through, then let's not do it. But I'd like to do the cost benefit. But you also analysis. have to look at the it future. Set the precedent, yeah. Tie into the system, and then you'll have to deal but, with. But there again, yeah. it's, exactly. it's it's your unique, system. It's, your, it's yeah, municipal building. That's the reason. That's the reason to saying. do it. It's not because we decided to open up the storm drains yeah. for yeah. But everybody. This, this is how this all came yeah. about with the MS4. Yeah. Because if you all notice, when it rains, when we do get an inch or two of rain, and this, this year is more noticeable than ever, how the river comes up and down. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. In feet, not inches. Yeah. And when you get that kind of runoff from everybody up the Connecticut River Valley that dumps that into the river, it, it's a big effect. Yes. And unfortunately, uh, the water has been up to the town hall before, so... Well, as I said before, I see it coming again, you know, well, at some point. So does that suffice for you if that this happens well, for Tuesday? Well, if you, you, if you, if you as a board of selectmen tell the, tell, tell the planning board that it's okay for the tie-in, that, that's all we're looking for. Okay. And, you know, we could vote and Theoretically, if it were ripe for a vote on Tuesday, we could vote contingent upon board confirmation. Yeah. As, as long as you, that would be good. Right, then we all as long it. as the input yeah. you get is yeah. such that mm -hmm. it should be no problem. Now, it's designed for a hundred year storm, which is rare. So we'd only be looking <laughs> at the <laughs> overflow <laughs> of yeah. greater than a hundred year storm. But uh, you get a hundred-year storm when everything is frozen, 
you know, it's full of water, it's frozen, and then it rains again. Uh, you know, the pond, instead of being four feet deep, is now uh, 12 inches deep. A 100 year storm only qualifies for non frozen. Okay. So that is another benefit of having a buried system. Do you guys have any idea what the water table is right there? Is it like five feet below the grade or is it like, it's like deep, 30, 40 feet below grade at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were the car samples when they hit water, do you know? Oh, it was down, oh, it was, it was way down. Way down. The all the borings and things came out really well. And it was even deeper. Yeah. So is that a motion? How do you want to do this? Um, I will make a motion that we authorize uh, Christopher Okafer to um, proceed with the meeting with the architect. Um, He's also meeting with uh, Carlos from Berkshire. Design. Yeah, Berkshire Design, Carlos. Ob obtain whatever information he deems necessary in order to put him in a position to render a professional recommendation to the select board. <coughs> and further authorize the chair to, um, if she sees fit, bring that recommendation to the planning board um, subject to ratification of the full select board at our next meeting. Which will be Wednesday night. Which will be Wednesday. Yeah. That makes sense? Yep. yep. Okay. I can second it. I second it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, yeah. so, so does that mean, so if, yeah, I guess if the recommendation is, I mean, it goes either way. Yes, we can tie in, or no, we can't oh, no, tie we can. in. Yeah. So, um, does it mean regardless of the that? Because we could come back. It could come back here, and we could say no, we don't want it. If it is, <laughs> the answer is yes, we can tie in. But yep. it comes back here, and we say no, we don't want you tying in. We could go either way. Is that still? I mean, how does that affect the planning board's well, decision the, the, on Tuesday? The planning board's so, decision is contingent upon. So I would, I would, whatever we vote would not be written up and filed with the town clerk by the next day. Right. Yeah. So you got uh, ten days or whatever. I'm, uh, I will, I will sit on it, uh, and if if I have to come, if I have to make a motion for we recon, to reconsider at our subsequent meeting, I will. What, now let me ask you this question: How critical is it that we approve the station on Tuesday? What if we waited two weeks, and then we don't have to do all of this fancy "what if" in case of? Would, it, would, would, costs. would, it, would a two-week approval be that much of a big deal? We could move forward with the design, but we're already there. With the They're design. already ninety-seven percent with the design. With the design, so that's not not the issue. Um, I don't have a problem with two weeks that, later. That, 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 I'm, I'm just mentioning that because we're not we're not going to start the project until after the library starts their project. Right. So I mean, a two week later approval would only be a two week later approval. It won't be any, there's no critical path that's got to be done, and you could avoid your concerns. And because I could see our board saying, no, we're not going to vote on it because we want a actual. Full board approval, not in case of because just put. Well, I can see the concern. We need only have four. We need yeah. all four. Yeah, I mean, I I just completely defer to the building committee on that. I, from watching the meeting, I was under the impression that time was more of the essence. But you'd know because you're on the committee. Yeah, I I mean I I don't know if the time is of the essence. Um, that two weeks would make a difference. You know where we are with the design and stuff and what need. This is the only thing that needed to be present. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the other few issues that were were brought up, Carlos did a real good job of addressing everything. There are a couple of things that we want some tree, he wants some of this, some of that. Those are all a few I think cosmetic we even, things. We're even addressing the turnaround. I, um, I think you keep. I think you're going to put the turnaround on there. Yeah. More than likely, um, the trees and stuff. You know, like I said, there's some cosmetic issues. Yeah. And those are, those are relatively simple. I mean, I can I can call Phil tomorrow and just clarify it before you do take it off, just to. Well, it's good. It's on to the sure agenda. It's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't need to get, if we could put it off for two weeks, just to make sure all these things are, well, in a row, I'll call yeah. you. Yeah, okay. and then otherwise we can let let this vote stand. Mm -hmm. You comfortable with that? 
uh, holding off? No. I, well, uh, or if, if Joyce says, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Yeah, we absolutely no, need the vote on Tuesday sure because, you know. I see it as that we could, but I want to just double check with Phil. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm just confused what we're, okay, so what's our plan? What's our, what, what's the preferred plan here? The preferred plan is, is to wait. You already wait seconded to, it. Wait. I know that, but it was open well, for, he discussion. Said for discussion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the pr the preferred plan is to do what Jimmy is saying, which is let's not jump through hoops. Let's give Chris Okafor time and and time for it to come back to us, and then the planning board gets clear direction, clean clear and clean direction. Yeah. For their meeting that they would have two weeks from presumably two weeks from the sixth, right? Mm -hmm. But we're hedging our bets only because Joyce is being put on the spot to say, yeah, I think that's okay. So, on the off chance that it's not okay, we're going back to the motion that was made and seconded, which is to place some reliance on Christopher to render a professional judgment that we would support and tell Joyce, yeah, go ahead and look. If you have to, bring that to the planning board on Tuesday, subject to ratification. See, when I talked to Chris, on Monday, he was going to be talking to Carlos, and I called Carlos, and they were supposed to have gotten together at that point mm -hmm. um, to go over this design and the and the drainage stuff. Go ahead. I, personally, I think it would look a lot tidier on your end if you took the time to gather the information and set a policy mm -hmm. or revise the policy that was set. I don't know if you could even find. Yeah. The ancient Who policy. Knows if it was fifty or sixty years but ago. But if you, if you you know formally agenda item to set a policy, um, that's that's your transparency. Um, because actually, I think a lot of this to goes back to the MS four regulations now too that have changed. So I, I don't know how much we can actually tie in to to the drain. So that part of the MS4 hasn't been implemented yet, so we're still yeah, in but the it's evaluation. Come. It will if you come. read the whole thing. It will come at yeah. some point, but it's not, not a consideration no, right now. And, and I get the impression, I could be wrong, but Chris right. seems pretty conservative in his approach to things. He seems very pragmatic, but it, he and errs he did, on the side. And he did want to speak with Carlos. Yeah. They say that you should. You know, he could give me an answer on the phone without yeah. talking to him. That's I wanted him to talk to him. No, that's in that. <laughs> that's in the, that's in the, I know that's in a new. So the 19th. It's in a new MS4, next. but it hasn't been implemented. Well, well I'm just thinking, we, we have our current erosion and sediment control yeah. bylaw that we are amending to conform with MS4. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what, I apologize for the, the side chatter, but I was it, frankly, it, that that itself is fifteen or twenty pages, yeah. and I don't recall yeah. the, the well, chapter and verse what it says. I, I don't remember exactly the, the section. Obviously, any of that, but I believe that the general thing for the MS four is that this excuse me it doesn't say towns should not. It says towns should discourage yeah. something to that effect, tying into municipal systems. I would just prefer to wait the two two weeks, get clear information, and make a decision. It's just confusing to me granting approval, even though we're unsure and not talking about it, and then reversing our decision afterwards. And it's already against the bylaw that we have. Yeah, I, I just think it's too confusing, and I, I mean, we have a lot of potential delays if we have to wait a week to figure this out seems like a critical part of the project yeah I, I think I'm just I'm I'm more inclined and to I and I think when the, you were the setting WWF the date for the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That I, that's right back, that's right you were wondering if I had suggested putting it off to the second meeting because we have another public have hearing the, that meeting that night you have the planning and um, commission the first one is the planning commission so yeah. uh, which can take a while. You, we can we can spend a lot of time talking about the fine points of uh, adult marijuana. And I don't think that they were objected to moving it to the next meeting either. They, they really. didn't seem very strong on either one. No. So yeah. 
-hmm. If you want to do a tentative to hope put us in a hold for that 19, then I'll. You're call already you. on the agenda for both, anyways. We are. Yeah. Okay. Because we put them on, we put them on for both in case it was open. Okay. In case we didn't settle it on the next meeting. Okay. So, okay. Do so you want to withdraw your motion under second or no, or what? If you want to withdraw it, you can. And then I, I will talk to them and wait until Chris meets with. Okay. That's what Carlos. I'm ready. I can withdraw my second. Yes. I can I withdraw my second. <laughs> All right. And so then we'll get a better definitive answer for that meeting. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Dude, you guys should come more often. One <laughs> <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> At least it gets a little bit settled anyway before you get to that final okay. point, which makes it a little easier. Anything else from the planning board, though? No? Not too much. Okay. See that? They're worth that $600 right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you're really cutting that one. <laughs> All right. I, do you have anything you want to talk about tonight? Sure. Just go quickly through what we've been working on. We talked about the compensation classification plan study that's given a big kickoff on March 6th for the completion date of April 1st. Uh, we applied for the efficiency and regionalization grant through the community compact to partner with the city of Northampton for their laser fish enterprise content management system. We are hopeful that we will get that. Um, <coughs> Moody Bridge Road, we still have that issue with the uh, second culvert that um, has failed. Uh, the project estimates for that are ballooning. 230000 to $250,000 is the price estimate for right now. We do not have that kind of money lying about. Uh, so we're exploring funding through a culvert replacement grant program administered by the Massachusetts Division of Ecological Restoration. It's a competitive grant with the March 20th deadline. It's a fussy, fussy, fussy grant. So we're going to spend a lot of time on that. But we're hopeful that we'll get something from, for our efforts. That particular culvert was ranked in the top 10% for culvert replacement by the that division that I just made a mention, so looking forward to that. David, where do we stand on the neighbor's request that we look into the closing of the road, closing of the road <coughs> and using the flap grant that funds is, on that? That's going to come up for discussion on your March 6th meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, we talked about the fire substation, we talked about the senior center and library construction. Everything seems to be moving along very nicely there. So the Turka Park, I'm meeting with the Park and Rec Commission tomorrow night in order to plan out the final work for Phase 3 reconstruction. And they've asked for and received uh, tentative approval for another $32,000 worth of work from CPA money for that project. We talked about North Hadley Village Hall. OSHA update. We've received our DLTA grant to develop policies required by the new regulations uh, for uh, the OSHA requirements. So uh, with the towns of Chesterfield and Goshen, we received $12,500 for that effort. So we're going to be moving forward with that. That'll be a real time saver for all the departments. Uh, the work over at uh, Campus Plaza Road, that water work has been completed, the free reimbursement has been filed with the Commonwealth. That project is substantially completed. Thank you to the Commonwealth for a grant of $95,000 for that project. I hope we're way under on that, aren't we? No, we're a little bit over. By about five grand. Did we ever hear from the owners of that piece of property? Yes, we did. So they've, uh, they've extended their uh, affordable housing by a few years. We're sending them a letter saying, even though we fixed your water line, doesn't mean it's our water line, it's still yours. So just in case there's an issue later on. DLTA. Council sent them a letter? 
sorry? Council sent them a letter or you sent them a letter? I sent a letter to, Chris Okafor sent a letter to me. I'm sending that letter to council and council will be in touch with their council. DLTA, uh, DLTA update, as I said, we got the 12500 for OSHA, but we also received $7,500 for the affordable housing study and financial practices for $8,000, and we're waiting for the FEMA project and the other, uh, the uh, rural uh, policy handbook. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll get money for those as well. So. Everything else is a long-term uh, project that just keeps on going month after month and a little progress to show for, but eventually we'll hit the, the promised land at some point on some of these uh, departmental functions. Our revenues look very strong going seven months into the year. Our expenses are right on target, maybe a little, a little less than what we were expecting to be spending. So that looks like that's in hand. FY 2020 budget, we're working on it. Um, the audit is com nearing completion with a due date of March 22nd. February 13th, annual town meeting warrant closes. That happened a while ago. The See April 1st, Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. April 9th is our annual elections. May 2nd is annual town meeting. Okay. I like those uh, revenue and expense numbers you put in there, David. That's yeah. nice to see. Nice addition. Thank you. All right. Any announcements this evening? I no. have one. Um, so we received notification from Hopkins Academy that the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation is seeking uh, recommendations for their annual outstanding alumni recognition. Um, so there is an application process. Um, in order to qualify, you need to recommend somebody who is an alumni of Hopkins Academy, either living or deceased. Um, who has demonstrated a variety of outstanding service over a period of time to his or her alma mater, or recognized professional excellence and outstanding service to the community, state, or nation. Um, in order to nominate someone, you have to include your own contact information, so name, phone number, email address, the name of the person you want to nominate, and their class, Hopkins Academy class if it's known, and any supporting information and credentials um, the information uh, should be sent to the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation, but without reading all of this, basically you need to contact Judy Pelis. Um, and her email address is judypelis at yahoo.com. I only had one announcement, and I, I don't think we had it in our last one about the passing of Agnes Bonash. Um, so she made her 100th birthday, but she uh, passed away a couple of weeks ago. So we do extend our condolences to her family and friends. That's all I have for this evening. Oh, I wanted to say thank you uh, for this past storm to our uh, police, fire, DPW. They did a building inspector. Building inspector. Um, they all did an outstanding job. Um, everybody stayed safe. We were minimal of damage that happened throughout the town, but there, you know, there were some trees and things down. And they did a great job clearing the streets and everything else. So uh, I think we were one of the lucky communities for sure. But thank you to everybody who uh, worked very hard and diligent uh, through this past storm. Thank you. Anything else? Motion. Motion to adjourn. No, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stay? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good night. See you in two weeks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>